Hey guys, welcome back. Today we've got a big one. Apple has just announced the new MacBook Pro with the M5 chip, and everybody's asking the same question. Is it actually worth upgrading from the M4? Or from an M3, M2, or even an older M1? In this video, we're doing a full specs breakdown, performance deep dive, display and battery analysis, and of course I'll give you my recommendation. Who should buy it now? Who should wait? And where you can find the best deals. So, settle in. This is the ultimate M5 versus M4 guide. Quick heads up, if you want more Apple leaks, honest reviews, and buying advice, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, let's jump into it. So guys, first impressions. The new MacBook Pro M5 looks and feels very familiar. Apple hasn't radically changed the chassis or the overall design language. That's intentional. The last several MacBook Pros nailed the balance of performance and portability, and Apple seems happy to keep that winning formula. What's different is under the hood, the M5 chip. Apple's upgraded silicon brings noticeable boosts in GPU, a small uptick in CPU performance, and wider memory bandwidth. But, and this is important, there are also a lot of things that stayed the same. RAM configurations, many of the I.O. options, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth specs are largely unchanged. That mix of some upgrades and some same is exactly what's making this launch feel like an iterative refresh rather than a full generational reinvention. In this video, we'll break it all into bite-sized pieces so you can decide if the M5 is for you. What's new? Quick spec snapshot. Let's hit the headlines first. Here's what's changed and what hasn't. Chipset, M5, new, modest CPU gains, Bigger GPU gains, improved neural engine. CPU performance, 12% uplift over M4 in typical workloads. Real-world workloads vary. GPU performance, 35, 40% uplift in graphics performance in some early benchmarks. Unified memory, baseline still 16 gigabytes. Upgrade options, 24 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes. Memory bandwidth increased from 120 GB slash s to 153 gb slash s in reported numbers wi-fi and bluetooth still wi-fi 6e and bluetooth 5.3 no wi-fi 7 no bluetooth 6. thunderbolt still thunderbolt 4. no thunderbolt 5 in the standard macbook pro m5 display the 14.2 inch liquid retina xdr mini led panel promotion 120 hertz Remains still stunning. OLED rumors exist for future models, but not this one. Ports, same port array, HDMI 2.1, SD card slot, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, MagSafe charging, battery and charging. Same 72.4 WH battery rating. Same charging speeds unless you buy higher wattage adapters for faster charging. Price, starts at the same baseline price as the M4 did for the base configuration no immediate price hike. That's the TLDR. Keep watching because I'll explain what all of that means in practice. CPU, where the M5 actually improves things. Right, let's talk CPU. The M5 brings an improvement, not a revolution. Benchmarks show roughly a 10 to 15% boost in single-threaded and multi-threaded CPU tasks compared to the M4 in everyday workloads. That includes things like compiling code, video exports on some projects, and multitasking with heavy apps. Why is it modest? Because Apple kept the same core configuration. The M5 and the base MacBook Pro uses the same number of performance and efficiency cores as M4 standard SKU. Apple focused more on clock speed optimizations, improved thermal headroom, and some microarchitectural tweaks. Those translate to smoother performance under sustained loads and slightly faster single-task bursts. So, if you do light to moderate professional workloads, web development, photo editing, spreadsheet crunching, you'll notice things feel snappier, apps launch a bit faster, but it won't be a night and day difference compared to an M4. For heavy code compiles and extreme rendering workloads, the M5 will be useful, but unless you push the CPU to its limits daily, it's not a must-have upgrade. GPU, the area that actually feels like a jump. Here's where the M5 shines, the GPU. 
Early reports and benchmark leaks show a 35 to 40 percent increase in GPU throughput in many workloads. That's a real, meaningful gain for video editors using accelerated effects and real time previews, 3D content creators with moderate scenes, gamers and game streamers who want better frame rates at higher settings on Apple Arcade titles and cross platform games. Developers building metal-based apps or testing GPU comp. Pew tasks. Apple's optimization here seems focused on both raw shader performance and updated GPU driver slash engine improvements. The increase in memory bandwidth. We're seeing figures moving toward 153 GB slash S. Also helps the GPU a lot. Higher bandwidth means the GPU can feed textures and compute data faster. Improving performance in real workloads not just synthetic tests. If you do graphics-heavy work, even occasional AAA gaming or pro video editing, the M5 is a worthwhile upgrade. For everyday users who only stream, browse, or write documents, the GPU gains are nice to have, not essential. Neural Engine and AI. On-device smarts get better. Apple continues to push on-device machine learning, and the M5's neural engine has been improved. That translates to a faster experience in tasks like on-device image analysis in photos, AI-accelerated features in apps, smart selection, live transcription, local AI models, and privacy-friendly assistance running on your Mac. We're seeing faster AI inference, meaning tasks that used to ping cloud servers can now run locally with better performance and less latency. For creators who use AI-assisted editing or for devs building local AI tools, the M5's improvements are significant. Memory and bandwidth, the unsung upgrade. One of the most impactful changes that people don't always realize is memory bandwidth. The M5 moves to higher bandwidth unified memory, from roughly 120 gigabytes per second to around 153 gigabytes per second in reported figures. Why does that matter? because Apple uses unified memory shared by CPU and GPU. When the GPU doesn't have dedicated VRAM, it relies on that memory bandwidth. So by improving bandwidth, Apple effectively gives both CPU and GPU faster access to the same data, improving real-world performance across workflows. Bottom line, even if your machine still has 16 gigabytes of RAM, it feels faster in heavy tasks where memory throughput matters like large photo libraries, high-res video timelines, and complex GPU compute tasks. Storage and configurations, nothing wild here. Storage options are as expected. Fast NVMe SSDs, same baseline capacity for the default model, and higher tier upgrades for power users. Apple continues to offer the typical 512 gigabytes base model with upgrade options to one terabyte, two terabytes, and higher. If you're a pro user and you work with 4K per 8K video, I still recommend at least one terabyte internal or plan for fast external SSD solutions with Thunderbolt 4 enclosures. Remember, even though Thunderbolt 4 is excellent, it's still not Thunderbolt 5. So external workflows are still excellent, but not pushing the absolute bleeding edge bandwidth that TB5 could offer. Ports, Thunderbolt, and connectivity, disappointments and reality. This is the part where some folks will be disappointed. Apple kept Thunderbolt 4 and didn't include Thunderbolt 5 in the standard MacBook Pro M5 lineup. That means 40 gigabits per second for TB4 rather than the potential 80 to 120 gigabit per second we might see with TB5 in the future. Other notes, Wi-Fi 6, it remains the wireless standard for now, so no Wi-Fi 7 yet. Real-world Wi-Fi 6E performance is still excellent for most homes and offices. Bluetooth 5.3 is still present, stable, reliable, and power-efficient for peripherals. HDMI 2.1 remains for external displays, great for connecting TVs and monitors at high refresh rates and resolutions. MagSafe continues to provide safe, fast charging, and the battery remains 72.4 WH for the 14-inch models. In practice, these choices mean the M5 is built for today's workflows, not tomorrow's absolute bandwidth extremes. For most users, TB4 plus Wi-Fi 6E is plenty. 
But if you're someone who needs TB5 level throughput from multiple ultra high speed NVMe RAID arrays, this might be a reason to wait for higher tier models or future updates. Display, still stunning, but OLED rumors persist. Apple kept the Liquid Retina XDR mini LED display for the 14.2 inch model. And honestly, it remains one of the best laptop displays around. The 120Hz promotion refresh rate, incredible peak brightness for HDR, deep blacks thanks to local dimming zones, and superb color accuracy make this display excellent for color critical work. That said, there are rumors about OLED for future MacBook Pros. OLED would bring perfect blacks and potentially better power efficiency for certain content. But for this M5 generation, Mini LED holds the crown in practical brightness and HDR performance. If your workflow depends on the absolute best contrast per dollar right now, the M5 model's display is still top tier. If you're chasing the OLED experience specifically, you may want to wait for later MacBook Pro generations. Battery life, mostly the same, slight efficiency gains. Battery specifications remain similar and Apple is still quoting around full-day battery life for mixed usage and a legendary up to 24 hours video playback claim for certain usage models remains in their messaging. What's changed is efficiency. The M5's 3 nanometers process improvements and tighter power control generally deliver slightly better efficiency under lighter loads. Real-world results show that most users will get comparable or slightly better battery life than the M4 especially when browsing, streaming, and working with lightweight apps. Under heavy, sustained loads, the battery life still depends heavily on workload and thermal management. Fast charging behavior also remains the same. Plug in a 96W or higher adapter for faster charge times. Otherwise, the included adapter will give standard speeds. Thermals and sustained performance, handling the heat. Apple's thermal design has improved incrementally. Thanks to the M5's efficiency and the same well-engineered MacBook chassis, you should see consistent sustained performance for longer bursts compared to older machines with larger, hotter silicon. This is especially relevant for creatives doing long exports, 3D renders, or gaming. However, do expect fans to spin up under intense loads. Apple has improved the fan curves and heat dissipation, but this isn't a gaming desktop. It's a high-performance laptop with the usual trade-offs between silence and sustained power. Real-world benchmarks. What to expect? Synthetic benchmarks are useful, but real-world workflows matter. Here's a practical breakdown of where the M5 will show gains. Video export. Final Cut Pro slash Premiere on Rosetta slash Native Faster. GPU accelerated effects and smoother scrubbing thanks to GPU uplift and memory bandwidth. Exports may be moderately faster depending on codec. Photo editing, Photoshop, Lightroom snappy brush performance, better real-time rendering with big images. 3D modeling slash rendering, Blender slash metal apps, faster GPU previews, quicker renders in GPU accelerated paths. CPU bound renders will see modest improvements. Coding slash compiling, slightly faster compile times in many cases. The 10-15% to 15 CPU gain is noticeable but not dramatic. Gaming, better frame rates, and settings headroom for supported titles. Not a full gaming laptop but solid for casual and some more serious gaming sessions. If you're a creator, the M5 is a meaningful upgrade in the GPU and memory bandwidth department. If you're a casual user, expect smoother everyday performance but not a transformative leap. Price and value. Is it worth the cost? Apple kept the base price the same as the M4's base SKU, so no upward price surprise for the entry model. That's good news. The bigger question is value. Who benefits most from upgrading? Upgrade if you use GPU-heavy apps, do regular video editing, 3D work, or you need the extra neural engine slash AI headroom. Skip if you own a recent M3 or M4 and your daily workflow is light to moderate. The CPU uplift isn't massive, and the I.O. limitations might not justify an upgrade. Consider buying M4 on sale. If you want a great MacBook Pro but don't need the latest GPU spike, look for Black Friday slash seasonal deals on M4 stock. 
it'll perform near the M5 in many tasks. In short, the M5 is worth it if your workload leverages the GPU and memory bandwidth improvements. If not, the M4 and even some M3 models remain excellent values. Who should buy right now? Let me make it simple. Buy the M5 if you're a content creator, video editor, graphics designer, or developer who benefits from extra GPU and AI performance. The memory bandwidth improvements will make your heavy projects snappier. Wait or buy M4 on deals if you're a student, office user, or casual creative who values price over marginal performance gains. The M4 will handle your needs, and you can save money. Skip if you have an M1 Pro slash Max or M4 Pro slash Max. You might not see enough reason to jump. Those higher tier chips already offer substantial performance for pros. Tips for buying and what to look for. If you decide to buy, here are a few practical tips. Choose the right RAM. 16 gigabytes is fine for most users. Go 24 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes if you run heavy VMs, large data sets, or professional video timelines. Storage, get what why? Oh, you'll realistically need. External NVMe over Thunderbolt 4 is fast, but internal SSDs are still quicker for many workflows. Adapters and dongles. If your workflow needs more bandwidth or specialized ports, invest in quality TB, four docks, and SSD enclosures. Apple Care. If you rely on your MacBook for work, Apple Care could be worth it for peace of mind. Watch for deals. M4 units will likely drop in price after the M5 launch. Perfect if you want strong performance at lower cost. Final verdict, straight talk. So guys, to wrap this all up, the MacBook Pro M5 is a solid iterative update. It's not a revolutionary redesign, but it's meaningful where it counts. GPU performance, memory bandwidth, and on-device AI. Apple wisely kept the design display quality, and battery capacities that made the MacBook Pro lineup so popular. If you're a creative professional or you run heavy graphics workloads, the M5 will be worth the upgrade. If you already own an M4 or a recent M3, you can comfortably wait for a more dramatic jump. Maybe with Thunderbolt 5, OLED displays, or bigger architectural changes. Or you can catch an M4 deal and save. Personally, if my workflow required the extra GPU and AI power every day, I'd pick the M5. If it didn't, I'd hunt for an M4 deal and use the save cash smarter elsewhere. Closing, call to action. All right, everyone. That's my full M5 versus M4 breakdown. What do you think? Are you upgrading to the M5, holding on to your current MacBook, or shopping the M4 deals? Drop your thoughts in comments right now. I read them all, and I'll reply to as many as I can. If this video helped you, hit the like button and subscribe for more Apple news, honest reviews, and practical buying advice. I've got more deep dives coming, including thermals, real-world benchmarks, and a full comparison video once we get our hands on an M5 test unit. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.